Good evening, everyone. Can you get your tunes? I gave it last week. Eliza, you have it with Okay. Okay, guys. So, we are, do you have your account with you? No, not today as well. Why? Next week, I need the calves, okay? If not, y'all are going to fight for the calves. Yes. Right. So, we are starting with ratios today. So, before I start with ratios, let me give you some examples to see how it's done. Do you know how ratios are written? For example, if I write this, how do you read it out? Tell me. Two to seven. Okay, you tell me how do you read it? We say two is to seven. Two is to seven. So these, this is how a ratio is written. So if I give you a ratio like this, how do you read this? Two is to five is to eleven. Right. So when I tell you. Can you listen to me? I'm giving you a very basic example for you to understand how you have to formulate your equations. Now, if you look at this, I've told you money is shared between Ben, Tom, and Zane in the ratio three is to two is to five. Tom receives 20 pounds. Now, guys, I've given you a ratio and I've also given you the names. Always remember the order they give you the names is the order they write the ratio as well. So three belongs to Ben, two belongs to Tom, and five belongs to Zane. That's clear? So always the names are given in the order of your ratio. Okay? Then we tell you Tom receives 20 pounds. How much does Ben receive? 30. You know it's 30? Then how much does Zane get? And then what's the total money? No, 100. 100. How did you do this? That's because I gave you the ratio of 2 as 20. So I'm changing this, okay? I am changing this to 30 pounds. Tell me. Good. 45 is Ben's share. What is Zane's share? Okay. And what's your total money? You'll add it. So guys, you are doing this mentally very fast. I and mean, I'm really happy about it because these are easy numbers, right? What if your examiner is going to give you something like 2,873? Can you do that very fast? Then what's the working you are going to do? You can again do cross multiplication that we learned in percentages. So if, you, if I'm explaining that method here, you can part A. Guys, they tell you Tom receives 30. What is the ratio that belongs to Tom? Number two. So you would say if two is equal to 30 pounds, I'm asking for Ben's share. What is Ben's ratio? Three. Three is equal to x what do we do after this cross multiplication elisa what do i write in the next line what is 2 into x what is 3 into 30 90 to find x we have to divide both sides by 2 algebra therefore x equals 45 you guys already came up with this answer right but this is the method of finding it this is the method of finding it can you copy this down, please? This is your A part's answer. B part, we will do the same thing for Zane's share. Try it out. Done? Okay, now for total money share, you know you can add the 30, 45, and 75. But if you are using ratios alone, how can you find it? 
what if i never gave you part a and part b in the question then do you know ben's and uh, zane's share you don't know right you are not going to waste time finding them individually as well if i had straight away asked you what's the total amount of money that has been shared you can simply do this work i would say total money shared guys what is the addition of all your ratio numbers what is 3 plus 2 plus 5 10 So what you would do is you would say if two is equal to thirty, ten will be equal to x. You know, if I did not give you part A and part B, you don't know Ben's and Zane's share, and you will not be able to do addition. So if I had straight away given this, you will add the total ratios and do this. So that that will be what two x equals three hundred, x equals one hundred and fifty. X equals one hundred. Take that down. Sorry. Thirty plus five, darling. No, no. Tom gets thirty. Tom is number two. No. Done. Okay, C part. When I ask you for the total amount of money shared, when you add all the ratio numbers three, two, and five, what's the answer? Ten. We know if the number two is equal to thirty, number ten has to be equal to x, and then you do cross multiplication. Okay. You don't have to write this down. Just listen to me. This is the A is to B is to C ratio. Okay, if I tell you A receives, a, if I tell you A gets hundred fifty, uh, okay, A gets fifty. I am asking you, um, what's the total amount of money shared? What is the total amount of your ratio? We know A gets fifty pounds. Okay, if I ask you for the total amount of money shared, we know A is over here, which is the nine. If nine is equal to fifty, what is equal to X? If I ask you for the total money shared, forty is equal to X. That's how you form your equation. If I change my question to A gets fifty pounds, how much? More does C get? How much more does C get? When I feel somebody is getting more, I have to basically look at the difference between both of them. What is the difference between both of them? What is the difference between A and C? Eleven is the difference. So we know C is getting eleven parts more than A. So when I ask you how much more is C getting? You can either find how much C is actually getting and then do the subtraction, or what can you do? You can find the difference in the ratio and do the equation as well. Nine is equal to fifty. Eleven equals x. You can actually do any method you wish. Okay, so I'm going to take you through some actual questions for you to uh, understand how to formulate them. Go to question number one. Question number one. Okay, ready. Here is a list of ingredients needed to make lentil soup for six people. So they have given you all the ingredients. Jenny wants to make lentil soup for twenty-four people. Can you underline twenty-four people? Okay. Work out the amount of vegetable stock she needs. When I ask you for the amount of vegetable stock, guys, do you have to worry about lentils, carrot, or onions? No, we will only look at the eight hundred milliliters. We know this ingredient list is given for how many people? Six. We will say if six is equal to eight hundred milliliters, 
24 will be equal to x. Do you understand how to formulate it? Yeah, right. After that, we will do cross multiplication. When I do cross multiplication, 6x equals what's 24 into 800? 9,000. 9,000? 19,200. Write it down. Find x for me. Okay, so what is x, guys? 3,200. Any questions regarding this? No? Right. Ravi is going to make lentil soup. He uses 450 grams of carrot. Underline 450. How many people is Ravi making the lentil soup for? In your ingredients list, this time, which ingredient are you going to look at? Carrots. So we will look at carrots. 300 grams is enough for how many people? Six. So we would say 300 grams is for six people. Then 450 grams will be for X people. Okay. Cross multiply. Two seven, two thousand seven hundred. Yeah. Okay. So Ravi had made soup for how many people? Nine people. Easy two marks. Understood? If anybody has a question, let me know. Um, move on to question number three. Start question number three. Here are the ingredients needed to make 12 muffins. Sarah makes 60 muffins. How much sugar she uses? Turn to question number three and take this down. That's for you. I'll get it. All right, okay. Okay, guys, how much sugar does she use? So you would say if 12 muffins needed 150 grams of sugar, Suleiman, you have a toot? Yes, Suleiman, right? Okay, guys, then 60 muffins equals X grams. Take this down faster. Cross multiply, 12x equals how much? 9,000. Divide both sides by 12, x equals 750. How many of you got this answer? Shanu? Why? Got confused, okay. Siddha, stop talking. James makes some muffins. He uses 625 milliliters of milk. How many muffins did he make? I'll keep you in front, Siddhas. You're talking? No. So I'm talking about the milk here. So we know 250 grams is for 12 muffins. 625 milliliters will be, will be for X. Do cross multiplication. 250x equals 7,500. X equals 3,0. Who got this? Kashnika? You got the 30? Madisha? With Ruth, did you get the 30? You are doing that. Okay, right. Take that down faster, guys. Pass your tooth. Copy this down faster. Those of you who are done, you can move on to question number seven. Move on to question number seven. Those of you who are done, do question number 19. Abraham, can I get one copy from ratio? Yeah. 
Guys, everyone's done with the seventh one? Okay, here is a list of ingredients needed to make apple and blackberry crumble for four people. Siddhas, you have to stop talking. Okay, stop talking. Rufus wants to make apple and blackberry crumble for 10 people. Work out the amount of apples he needs. So you're supposed to look at only apples. We know 300 grams is for four people. Then for 10 people, how much would it be? Anybody who got the answer? 750. Okay. Okay, so when we cross multiply this, we get 4x equals 3000. Divide both sides by 4, x equals 750. That's the right answer. All of you got that? Right. Roland makes apple and blackberry crumble for a group of people. He uses 920 grams of blackberries. Now from the ingredient list, we are going to look at which part? Blackberries only, right? 115 grams is for four people. Then 920 grams is for X people. When you do cross multiplication, what do you get? Final answer? 3680 divide both sides by 115. Answer has to be? How many of you got this? Okay. Go to question number 19. Question number 19. Nineteen one nine. I can just uh, uh, they'll get it okay in a while. They'll get it in a while. Huh? The tooth. Yeah, start it. I can stop talking. Start doing it. I will end up keeping three of you in three corners now. Don't talk. Not you, then. The table gives information about the ingredients needed to make 20 cookies. Work out the weight of flour needed to make 30 of these cookies. Zaid, tell me the formula. Stop talking. Okay, Akhil, tell me. Akhil, tell me. Thank you. Akhil, tell me. Okay, 240 equals 20. Next line. Okay, now is he right? Is he right? He says 240 equals 20, 30 equals X. No, that's because 20 and 30 are the number of people. They can't be in two different locations. Either you write 20 equals 240 or you write X equals 30. They have to be below each other. Understood? So according to the way he started, he's supposed to say X equals 30. Right? Now, when we cross multiply, what's 30 into 240? 7,200. Equals 20x. Divide both sides by 20. Answer has to be? How many of you got this? Okay, good. Suleiman? 
Yeah, okay. I'll give you two minutes, do the B and C. The rest of you make it first. You're always talking now. Nusrat is making some of these cookies. He uses 150 grams of butter. Akil, what are you discussing? Shall I change your place? Okay, tell me. Will you work out the weight of the sugar he needs. Now, guys, he is using 150 grams of butter is the information they've given, but they are talking to you about sugar. Is there any relationship? So what you can do instead is, when they use 125 grams of butter, they use 100 grams of sugar. So I, you can do this. Huh? We can say, when 125 grams of butter is used, 100 grams of sugar is used. So we can name this as B and this as S. This time, how many grams of butter is used? 150. We have to write it under butter equals X. You understand? Make a connection between the two ingredients. Right? When we cross multiply, 125X equals 15,000. X equals? Hundred twenty. Is it hundred twenty? Okay. Tashnika, did you get hundred twenty? Yes. Okay. Take it down. You have the tube. No. No. Do the C part. Akil, Akil, stand up. Why are you talking? For so long he was asking that. Using the information given in the table, write down the ratio of the weight of butter to the weight of nuts. What's the first ingredient they have used in the question? Then what they have used? I need all of you to listen. When they say butter is to nuts, you're supposed to say B is to N. B is to? What's funny? Huh? Right. Done? Are you done laughing? I don't see. <laughs> Why? What's funny with the B and then? Okay. Now, guys, tell me from the table how much butter has been taken. 125. So, below B, you're supposed to write 125. How much in nuts? 75. Done? Okay, now you need to focus on this a bit. When I tell you to write this as a ratio in the form 1 is to n, did the 125 become a 1 or did the 75 become a 1? Akil, are you listening? Okay, but what became a 1 here, the 75 or the 125? Okay, how do we make this a 1, guys? We have to divide this by? 125. If you do something to one side, you have to do the same thing to the... So divide both sides by 125. 1 is to 0. Point. Is it recurring? So your answer will be 1 is to 0. 0.6. 
Okay, I have a random question for you. If I give you guys, if I give you 10 is to if I give you 10 is to 20, listen, 10 is to 25, and I ask you to write this in the form n is to 1. Which number has become a 1 here? If the 25 should become a 1, you're supposed to divide it by? If you do that to one side, you have to do the same thing to the? So 0 0.4 is to 1 will be the answer. You understand that theory? Yes, Vidrut. Because that's what the question says. When I say n is to 1, 25 only has become a 1. Okay? So if I change the question to this, guys, 3 is to 5 has become 1 is to n. What became a 1 here? So you divide both sides by 3. When I divide both sides by 3, it's 1 is to? It's recurring, okay. 1.666. Understand? Right. Okay, move on to question number two. Question number two. How many sides does a triangle have? Three sides, right? Draw a triangle on the side. Just a random triangle. Question two, okay. Isn't it on a new page? Okay, guys. Now, the lengths of the sides of a triangle are in the ratios 2 is to 6 is to 7. The length of the longest side is 24.5. Work out the perimeter of the triangle. Akhil, how do you find the perimeter of any shape? How do you find the perimeter of any shape? At all sides. Okay. Now, guys, when they say 2 is to 6 is to 7, does that mean they are the lengths or they are just the ratios? They are the ratios. 2 is to 6 is to 7. They told us that the longest side is 24.5. Can you underline the word longest side? So 24.5 belongs to 2, 6 or 7. The, does that make sense? Seven is the largest number, so that is your longest side. So below seven, I want you to write 24.5. Okay. So now we are supposed to find what two and six are, right? Shall we start? So we would start doing this. We would say if seven is equal to 24.5, two is equal to? x x we know if 7 is equal to 24.5 2 is equal to x can you find that please all of you hakim this is hakim so when you do cross multiplication you get 7x equals 49 x equals Seven. So can you go and write seven under the two? We know that's a seven, okay? Next one, Zaid, how do you find the six? You would say if seven is equal to 24.5, six equals x. 7x equals how much? 147. Divide both sides by 7. What's the answer? Okay. Now, how do we find the perimeter, guys? The addition of 
all these three numbers. What's the answer? Check if all of you got 52.5. Got it? Move on to question four if you're done. What time are you coming to class? Why? I think I should do the same thing then. Okay. Bavin, Max and Imran share 6,000 rupees in the ratio 2 is to 3 is to 7. Imran gives 3 fifths uh, of his share of the money to Bavin. What percentage of 66,000 rupees does Bavin now have? Give your answer to the nearest whole number. Can you underline the word percentage and nearest whole number? Okay, guys, when I tell you A is to B is to C is 2 is to 3 is to 5, and if I tell you that the total amount of money is 10,000, if I ask you to find B's share, you can simply do 3 over, what's the total ratio? What's the total ratio? 2 plus 3 plus 5 is 10. So you can say 3 over 10 into what's the total amount of money you have? 10,000. If I ask you for C's amount, what would you do? 5 over 10 into 10,000, which is 5,000, right? If I ask you for A's amount, 2 over 10 into 10,000. Now you guys tell me in this particular question, how do I know how much Imran got? What is Imran's ratio? Okay, how did you get that? Okay, good. Guys, we know this adds up to how much? 12. What is Imran's share here? 7 is Imran's share. This is Bavin's share and this is Max's share. If I am finding for Imran, I have to take the number 7. 7 over 12 into 6,000, what's the answer? 3,500. All of you write that. The next guy that we have to worry about is Bavin. How much did Bavin get? Eliza, what's the formula? What is Bavin's share? 2 over 12 into? What's the answer? How much? 1,000. Imran got 3,500. Bavin got 1,000. Should we find Max's amount? Should we find Max's amount? He is not even relevant here, so let's not waste time, right? Now, we know Imran gives three-fifths of the share to Bavin, right? So, go to Imran's value, which is 3,500, 
If you multiply this by 3 over 5, what's the answer? 2100? Okay. Imran gave 2100 to Bavin. So we have to add a 2100 to Bavin's amount. How much does Bavin have in total? 3100. Is that your final answer? We have to give it as a percentage. Siddhas, can you tell me how do I change this to a percentage? They tell me. How do I change 3100 to a percentage? 3100 over what's the total we have? 6000 into what's the answer? I need the answer to the nearest whole number. Answer? What is, is to the nearest whole number? 52%. 52%. Check. Those of you who are done, move on to the fifth one. Rachel, Mario and Sanjit share some money in the ratios four is to three is to nine. They didn't ask Max. No? They only spoke about Barrett. You don't have to do it. Okay. So we know, Akhil, tell me, what is the uh, ratio that belongs to Russia? What's the ratio that belongs to Russia? The four, the three, or the nine? Why nine? Why guess? Ration is the first name they use. That means it belongs to four. Four belongs to Russia. Mario, three, and Sanjit, nine. Do you guys understand? You have to go in that particular order, okay? Mario receives 96. Work out the difference between Russia and Sanjit. Can you underline the word difference? When I say difference between Russell and Sanjit, Russell gets four and Sanjit gets nine. What is the difference in their ratio? Five. So we straight away can find that five. Okay. So we know Mario gets 96. Mario's ratio is three. Three equals 96 pounds. Then five will be equal to X pounds. This, in other words, is your difference, okay? Five is your difference. Three is equal to 96. Five is equal to X. Let's do cross multiplication. Three X equals, what is it? 480. Two hundred? One sixty. 160 is your answer. Uh, some of the students would have found uh, Rashil and Sanjit separately and then subtracted. That's fine as well. This is the short. Okay, straight away you get the difference. Okay, move on to six. Sixth one, guys. Hakeem, you can do it on the tube. Zaid, are you done? Faster.
the weekly rent for a holiday apartment is 530 pounds which is the same as 715.5 euros the weekly rent for a holiday cottage is 750 pounds using the same rate of currency exchange work out the weekly rent for the cottage in euros okay suleiman tell me what's the formula we have to write 530, very good, 750, how many of you came up with this? Okay, very good. Now let's cross multiply to get the answer. Five hundred and thirty six thousand. Thousand twelve point five or point five zero? Five zero. I've told you always write it to two decimal places. Any questions regarding this? Seven is done, right? Move on to eight. Lynn went on holiday to India. She changed 250 pounds into rupees. The exchange rate was one pound equals 97 rupees. How many rupees did Lynn get? So, Zaid, tell me the formula. Yeah. What were you doing all this time? Eighth one. Akhil, stop talking to him. Sorry? One equals 97. 250 equals. Because pounds and pounds should come together, okay? So let's do cross multiplication. What was your answer, guys? X equals? 24,250 rupees. All of you got that? Right. When she returns from holiday, she has four 500 rupee notes. She changes this money into pounds. The exchange rate now is one pound equals 93.5 rupees. Work out how many pounds she gets to the nearest pound. Underline nearest pound. Okay. Vidruth, tell me the formula we have to write. One pound equals 93.5 rupees. I need all of you to focus. Next. X equals. Why did he say 2000? Because there are four 500 rupees. Notes okay, yeah, not necessary for your reference and this side. Okay, when I cross multiply Akil, what do I get in the next line? What do I write? 93.5x. What's the answer? I've told you to give your answer to the nearest pound. Akil, tell the answer. What is it to the nearest pound? Twenty-one. Is it twenty-one or twenty-two? What's the answer in the cal, Akil? 
21.39. If it's a 3, do you round up? So what should we write? 21. Question number 9. Manu, Liam and Net share 420 pounds in the ratio 4 is to 5 is to 3. Okay. Liam then gives net 75. Express the amount as a percentage. I'll give you three minutes start. Whose share did you all find first? Is Manu relevant in this question? No. So let's find Liam first. Zaid, what's the formula to find Liam's share? No, no. What is Liam's value here? Five, right? Five over. What's the total ratio? What is your denominator? Zaid, what's the total of all these numbers? Twelve. So it will be five over twelve multiplied by four hundred twenty. What's the answer? Yes, Madisha, what's the answer? Huh? 175. After Liam, who, uh, whom should we find? Ned. Akil, what is the equation for Ned? 3. Why 75? 420, what's the total? What's the answer? Okay. Tenager, what do you do next? They tell us that Liam then gives Ned 75, right? Very good. We have to add 75 to 105. What is your answer? Who got this? Was Liam even necessary here? Was his amount necessary? Not really. Okay. Now tell me, is this your final answer? No. We have to change this to a? Rima, change it to a percentage. Yes? Vidruth, change this to a percentage. 180 over 420 into 100. Answer? Who got this? Nice. Who stopped with 180? Hakim, did you get the 43%? Zaid, are you done copying? Hey, you are very slow, both of you. I'm sorry, Akil is anyway very fast in copying. No? Pro. <laughs> Do the tenth one, guys. Say the idea. Okay, not the tenth one. Uh, move on to twelve. Work out the difference between the largest share and the smallest share when 3,450 yen is divided in the ratios 2 is to 6 is to 7. We know 3,450 is your total amount of money. Yes or no? That's your total. When I say difference between the largest share and the smallest share, what are the two numbers from the ratio that I have to choose? Okay. Two and seven. What is the difference between two and seven? Five is your difference, right? 3,450 is the total amount of money you have. What is the total of your ratio? Your total ratio is 
15. So we know if 15 can be equal to 3450, 5 is your difference. 5 will be equal to x. So for your reference, I would say this is your total. This is your difference. Okay, do the cross multiplication and get me the final answer. Done? Question number 13. That's very easy. Start. Question number 13. Okay, all of you final answer? Yes. What is it? 94.20. Okay. Some of you stopped with a point two, is that right? When it comes to currencies, what are the two ways you can write your answers? Whole number of two decimal places. Eight equals sixty-two point eight zero. Twelve equals x. Always remember, eight and twelve should be below each other. The same type of values should be below each other. If not, your ratio working will definitely go wrong. So, yeah, when you do cross multiplication, you should have got 94.20. You can, um, what is 7 plus 15? 22, right? Come back at 422. Sharper. Don't get late. No, no. No, no, no. This is enough time. Sharp 22, be back, okay? I'm starting something very important. Okay, guys. Um, go to question number. Question number 14. Question number 14. Herminia has a swimming pool in her garden. The pool is empty. The pool is in the shape of a cuboid that is 12 meters long by 8 meters wide. She wants to fill the pool with a water of depth of 1.8. So I'm going to draw the pool over here. Right? Do you guys know what's a cuboid? Okay, you all know what's a cuboid? Yeah? You know how a swimming pool looks like? Okay, guys, now this is the swimming pool. It's in the shape of a cuboid. All of you focus. It's 12 meters long and 8 meters wide. So put in the lens. This is 12 meters long, 8 meters wide. 12 meters long and 8 meters wide. She wants to fill the pool with water to a depth of 1.8. So guys, if she's filling the pool with water, the depth is 1.8. Faster, copy this down. She's filling the pool with a depth of 1.8 meters, okay? Each hour, 3,000 liters of water flows into the pool. One cubic meter is 1,000 liters. How long will it take to... Fill the pool to a depth of 1.8. Give your answer correct to the nearest R. Underline the word nearest R. Okay. How do we find the volume of this swimming pool? Volume equals length into 
breadth into height. Akhil, okay, tell me the values to multiply. What's the length? 12 into 8 into? What's the answer? No, tell me the exact answer. Is it 172.8, all of you? Yes. What is the unit that I have to write for this? We multiplied meters into meters into meters, which means it will be meter cube. Write this down. Okay, we know one meter cube is thousand liters. Then this will be how many liters? Multiplied by 1000, it will be 172,800 liters. Do you agree with me? If you multiply it by 1000, yeah? You want to reduce it? Then she passed it. Behind. Okay. So, 3,000 liters for one hour, then 172,800 liters will take how many hours? What working do we have to do? Cross multiplication. So we know if 3,000 liters take one hour, 172,800 liters will take X hours. Yes or no? Yeah? Cross multiply. 3000 x equals 172,800. How do I find x now? Divide both sides by 3000. Which is 58 hours. See if all of you got that. Don't just copy it, do it, okay? Where did Hakim go? So you all are done, Pri? Huh? Why? Question 14. We just started, okay? Everyone's done? So y'all are not going to pray after this also? You have econ, right? What time is the econ break? Six twenty, no? How can you pray after at that time? Okay. What you can? Which law are you following? Fine. Very nice. Question number 15. The area of land on a farm is 120 hectares. The farmer grows crops on 7 8 of the land. On two-third of the land used to grow crops, the farmer grows wheat. Work out the area of the land that they use to grow the wheat. How much land do we have in total? In that, how much do we use for crops? In that, how much are we using for the wheat? That's all. Use your cal and get me the answer. Use your cal and get me the answer. Seventy. That was easy.
Okay, the B part. There is no B part, the question 16. Jess makes salad dressing by mixing lemon juice and olive oil in the ratio two is to five by volume. Guys, above two and five, can you label them? This is lemon juice and this is olive oil. Name it, please. Lemon juice and olive oil. She uses 0 0.5 liters of lemon juice. Work out how much olive oil she uses. Right. Two is to five is the ratio, yes or no? 0 0.5 liters of lemon juice will be written below the two or below the five? Akil, it will be written below the two or below the five? Why? Oh. Why aren't you all concentrating? Yeah. You are? I'm not talking to you. But they know who I meant. Akil and Zaid, stop talking. Once more you talk, I'm changing your face. 0 0.5 comes under 2 because they're talking about lemon juice. This is lemon and this is olive oil. We are supposed to find the olive olive oil in the dressing. So this is X. Do cross multiplication. 2X equals 2.5. X equals 1.25. How many of you got that? TS2 wants to make 630 milliliters of the salad dressing. He mixes lemon juice and olive oil in the ratio 2 is to 5 by volume. Work out how much olive oil he uses to make the salad dressing. Guys, total salad dressing is 630 milliliters. Yes or no? Out of this ratio 2 is to 5, what is for the oil? 5 or 2? So you say olive oil will be 5 over what's the total ratio? 7 multiplied by 630. 450. That was easy, right? Yes. Try the C part. Y'all are having a picnic there. Y'all are having a picnic there. After olive oil. Oil. Salad dressing is made by mixing lemon juice and olive oil again in the ratio 2 is to 5. Cost of lemon juice is 13.5. Olive oil is 18. Work out the ratio of the lemon juice in the salad dressing is to the cost of olive oil in the salad dressing. Give your ratio in the simplest form. Ha underline simplest form. So once again, this is lemon juice and this is olive oil. Guys, for you to find the cost, you have to multiply it by 13.5, right? How many 13.5s are we using? Two. Multiply 13.5 by two and till. So the lemon is to olive oil. So two into 13.5 is 27. What is five into 18? How many of you got this? Right. If we have to change this to the simplest form, you can type on your calculator 27 divided by 90. Type it. Yeah, just type. I'll tell you what to do. If you type this and click the equal button, what's the answer you get? No, the fraction. All of you get a 3 over 10? Okay, that means that is your simplest form. 3 is to 10. That's the shortcut to do it with the cal, okay? If you don't know to do it with the cal, you manually divide both sides by 9. You will get this answer. If it's a larger number, you can type this on the cal to get your simplest form. 
Okay, straight away you will get the answer. All done? Okay, question 17. A plane has length of has a length of 73 meters. A scale model is made of the plane. The scale of the model is 1 is to 200. Work out the length of the scale model. Give your answer in centimeters. Underline centimeters. Zaid, tell me 1 meter is equal to how many centimeters? One meter is how many centimeters, guys? 100 centimeters, okay? So we know a plane has a length of 73. First of all, write the original scale model, which is 1 is to 200. When I'm talking about scale models, you should always know one of them will be the actual. The other one will be your model, scale model. How do I decide what's the actual and what's the scale model? How do I decide what's the actual and what's the scale model? Very good. Always scale model will be the smaller number. Your actual will be the larger number. Okay. So guys, 73 meters of a plane means, is that the actual value or the model value? Okay. So according to Zaid. <laughs> Here, 73 meters means, do you know the size? You don't know. Have you gone to a fabric shop? Huh? Fabric. Never? You have. Have you seen that yellow color long ruler? That is one meter, right? Then in, imagine 73 of that. How long is that? You have a model of like that. Do you have car models and plane models at home as a toy? No. Who collects them? Anybody here? You collect? There are people who collect them, right? Smaller plane models, smaller car models. So according to Zaid, his model is bigger than his house. Right? So 73 meters is how many centimeters, guys? Multiplied by 100, which is 7,300 centimeters. Write that down. This 7,300 has to be, is it your actual or scale model? So we will write that below actual, 7,300. Listen, Akhil, stand up. So many chances. Don't tell me. Work out the length of the scale model. This side will be X. Let's now do cross multiplication. Exactly. Understood, guys? Yes? Right. Any questions? Move on to question 18. There are 96 cards on a table. Each card is either red or black. Zaid, stand up. Come here. Last one, sure. If anybody hears them talking, you're supposed to tell me. No eye contact also, okay? You can look at him later, right? Each card is either... Each card is either red or black. The ratio of the number of red cards to black cards is 5 is to 7. On top of 5 and 7, can you name them? 5 is red or black? Red. 7 is black. There is a circle on 35% of the red cards and there is a circle on 3 14th of the blue, uh, black cards. 
how many of the 96 cards is there a circle? First of all, let's find how many red cards and black cards we have. First of all, if I want to find the number of red cards, what's the equation I use? 5 over 12 into 96. What's the answer? Find the black cards. Is it 56? Right. Okay. 35% of the red cards have a circle, right? So we have to multiply the red cards by 35%. What's that answer? Yes, 35 over 100. What's the answer? Okay. 14, right. Black cards should be multiplied by what, guys? 3 over 14. Twelve. So how many cards in total? Have a circle. Twenty-six. Is that difficult? Not at all. Okay. Grade five question. Huh? We used to do this in grade five and six. Huh? <laughs> Say you wanted a last chance. No? <laughs> Why? Why? Why you all didn't do this before? No. Y'all have done? <laughs> you all are actually sitting for an easier paper, guys. You all are doing spec K, no? Are you doing like the? So you're smart, no? They are doing like the. So you can change to a no. They are again. Edexcel has. Uh, Edexcel has three types of papers. Spec B and Spec K, and there's something called a foundation paper. So that's a very easy paper, actually. No. Spec B is the hardest. In A, or A is also hard to an extent, but B is like extremely hard. When, when your what does your school do? I think it's A. It's A in the most of the places. When you're applying, you will know. There's something called a foundation paper as well. That's like very easy. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But the problem is if you do that paper, even if you score 99, you will get a C. No, what I mean is the highest grade you can get is a C when you do that paper. Even if you get 100, it's a C. So no point, right? So C is fine with Z? C is fine for math? Of course not. You need a world price? You do this. Okay, not 20. Maybe we can do 21. Okay, guys, question 21. Shush! We are currently we are doing A. Actually, A and B has only uh, a difference of three chapters. Y'all, B has matrices, local, and something else as an extra. No advantages, same. Write this note, okay? Write this note. I need you all to study this for next week.
Guys, don't talk, please. Huh? Even I need be. Okay, somebody tell me kilometers to meters, how do you convert? Multiplied by meters to centimeters? Is eight centimeters to millimeters? Are you sure? Then millimeters to centimeters. Divide by 10. This will be divide by 100 and divide by 1000. Please copy this down. It's very important. You have to study this for next week because when I start upper bounds, lower bounds, if you don't know this, you're going to be stuck. Okay. Yes. Yes, you can. You are doing speaking. You want to do B? I don't know. Life is good enough, no? Or hard enough, in other words. So just do A. <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> Actually, no difference. Just because you do B, it's better. A, it's not better. No. A and B, same thing. The result is going to be the same. But if you extremely love math and you want it to be very challenging, you can do it. Okay, tell me kilograms to grams, how do you convert? Into thousand. Stop talking. Milligrams to grams. Third one, volume. Third one, volume. Y'all are done with this. Can I move on to the next page? Circle theorem, I haven't actually planned on it yet. I'm just going in a particular order. Let me see when the circle theorem comes. Why you want that? That's what you're doing. So tell me the theory you learned. <laughs> Say, what is a cyclic quadrilateral? Okay, then Zaid, what are you doing at school now? Sets. <laughs> okay, guys, volume. What's so funny, guys? <laughs> Liters to milliliters, how do we convert? Thousand. Always, guys, remember when you're moving from a larger unit to a smaller unit, we multiply. Smaller unit to a larger unit, we have to always divide. Okay. Fourth one, time. Time. 
hours, minutes, and seconds. How to convert hours to minutes? Minutes to seconds? Seconds to minutes? Divide. Always when we are moving from a smaller unit to a bigger unit, it will be division, okay? Take this down faster. <laughs> Done? Okay. Huh? Seconds into hundred, no. Six. No, wait, nanosecond is I think one billion. No, wait. Milliseconds is hundred. But after that, we have something called nano, but you don't need this. Uh, I think it's. Okay, now using that knowledge here, question 21 tells you change 32.4 cubic meters into centimeter cube. Did I give you anything with powers at the moment in your note? No. Then do you think you have to do the same thing or there is something else that you have to do? Something else. Okay? Right. Thirty two point four. You guys tell me meters to centimeters, what's the conversion? We all know we have to multiply by. But unfortunately, we have this three here, right? When we have a three, you're supposed to multiply it by 100 to the power three. Understand? When it's a square, you have to multiply by 100 squared. What's the answer? Thirty-two million. Are you sure? Yes. Right, that's your answer. Squares, no? Who started who started the square numbers? Very good. There are a few questions left in the tube, okay? I want you to try them in pencil at home. Don't pack up. I never told you to pack up. Akil and Zaid stand up. Stand up. Okay, guys, next week we will be learning upper bounds and lower bounds. Okay, for that, if you don't know your units, you're going to be in trouble. So you have to study your units and be there. Okay, Akhil and Zaid, did you hear what I said? Yes. What did I say? I <laughs> I didn't even do that chapter, Akhil, for you to study that. I want you all to study all the conversions for next week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, it will be centimeter cube. It will be. It is a cube. Okay. 
<laughs> right guys uh, online students you can leave the meeting have a nice day take care okay see you guys bye